Hey guys, right here, welcome to the channel. I'd like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today we are talking about the manual transfer switch or the manual bypass switch that is on the EG4 Grid Boss. So the Grid Boss has a bunch of bells and whistles that can be incorporated with your all-in-one EG4 inverter. So you're wondering if you need a Grid Boss, I've got a, another video, I'll put a link to the top and it, it describes a bunch of examples on scenarios where you might need a grid boss feel free to watch that video if you're not sure if you need a grid boss but one thing that the grid boss does is it acts as a manual bypass switch so if you want to bypass so it can act as a uh, bypass switch similar to what i have here so if I've got like flooding and I want to uh, bypass all this equipment here and I want to run my house just straight off the grid, I want to bypass all this equipment that I have here, I can move this switch up and it'll bypass all this equipment so I can work on it. <clears throat> now I have seen some people where they install their all-in-one inverter, their grid boss next to it, and then they have a manual transfer switch. So is that really needed? So we are gonna go into that today with this. We're gonna look at how this works. It's pretty interesting actually. If I take this off, these switches work together. So I can only have one of these on at a time. And if you look closely here, you have uh, where you connect your backup loads onto this port and then you connect your non-backup loads onto this port. Now what is really interesting about this is if this is, if this is off in the off position and this is in the on position, this still can send power through to uh, energize the uh, non-backup loads and power can still go through here to generate the uh, backup loads. So even, so it's a little bit of a tricky design, really clever. So we're gonna look at how this works. Because uh, yeah, I, in my opinion, I don't think you need a manual transfer switch. If you have this, this is fully mechanical. It's not designed to work with software at all. And even if your grid boss goes bad, like some of your like circuitry or um, the software goes bad in here, this will still function. And I will show you that right now. So yeah, usually you have this faceplate on as a interlock kit, so you can only have one of these on at the same time. But in a bypass mode, so if you want to bypass all of your equipment, um, that's in the up position and that's in the down position. So that should bypass, that should send grid in here and it should automatically bypass all this stuff and send grid to both your critical load sub panel and your non-critical load sub panel. So here's my multimeter showing continuity and from this L1 to L2 connection and connection right there. It's literally not plugged into anything, but it, it'll send power to both of your uh, electrical panels here if you choose to have both electrical panels. I'm just going to have everything on uh, the backup loads panel because if the uh, power goes out and the grid isn't available, uh, this one has to turn off and I want to have my a whole home backup. So I'm going to have everything connected to this. So this is kind of a tricky little thing here. You, you notice there's actually a bus bar that bypasses this switch. So that's how it's working. And I'll just show you the diagram, the wiring diagram here. Okay, I got this from the manual. Here's the uh, product overview of the grid boss. Feel free to pause it if you want to read that. But here's the wiring diagram. Don't get too intimidated by this. I'll just go through this slowly here. Okay, so this whole system right here is the grid boss. Here's where you can connect your inverters, the hybrid inverters here. Here's where you can connect your smart ports. So if you have like an EV charger that you want to turn on, when only when your batteries are full, uh, you can have this um, smart port turn on. So these are all relays and these can be controlled by uh, software. So these can open and close conditionally depending on uh, what you have set up. For, for example, if you have a lot of solar out and your batteries are 
charge. You can set this one up so it'll close this relay and then send power to your EV charger. So that's all that. So this is this is mechanic. This is a uh, software controlled where you have a relay here. Okay, so here is the uh, grid connection. So if you have something go wrong over here, say one of your inverters is is it has gone bad and you no longer have an inverter here or even say um, some software went bad here and uh, the grid boss something broke on the grid boss or it's no longer functioning so you want to bypass all of your equipment so you want to bypass this you want to bypass the grid boss and you want to just send grid power directly to your loads right here so this is for all your, where you connect your uh, critical loads load panel and your non-critical load sub panel here. So in with the bypass switch, this would usually be up, this would be down. And so grid power will come through here. You have an optional breaker you can add. So it'll come through here. I'm not gonna add the breaker. I'm just gonna connect my grid power directly to the two lugs that are right here. My grid power is going to come right in here and it will come right over here. This will be on. So it'll send power through here and over to my backup loads. And it also sends power directly to my lugs here for this, for this panel. Yeah, this confused me at first because under normal operation, this one's off in the off position, but it still will send power to um, the panel here because it routes around this switch. Okay, so there are some cons to using the grid boss and the bypass switch built in, and that is it is just a little bit more complicated. If I'm out of town and we have flooding and my wife needs to just bypass the power, she's got to go and figure out how to use that interlock uh, plate, the interlock kit to uh, bypass the power. Now with this system, it's just way easier because all she has to do is just move this switch up and everything's on bypass. Now, if you already have a system wired like this, this is kind of a pain to wire because there's really large conductors in here. So normally I would not pull this off the wall and put a grid boss in place because I like this. It's working great for me. And you know, I don't think I need to use the smart ports or extra inverters that the grid boss offers. If I was starting from scratch though, I would be really tempted to put a grid boss here in place of this because uh, these can be pretty expensive too. Uh, 200 amp bypass switch. I think these are like $600, but um, grid boss is still more, but it has more bells and whistles. In the next video, we're going to talk about wiring the grid boss bypass switch versus this traditional bypass switch here. And I got wiring diagrams showing, uh, you know, the differences in the wiring. We'll jump into that. But if you want to learn more about the grid boss, I will leave the, some links in the description. We will talk to you on the next one. Bye.